Hello, my name is Jim Lee, and the title of this little interlude with you today is called Beyond the Charlie Brown Christmas. Most of you have seen this fabulous special that comes on every year and is the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Well, I just want you to know it has a little bit of wisdom in it, matter of fact, a lot, and it has some spirituality in it that I want to talk about today. In this special, Charlie Brown directs a Christmas play, and he's really hunting for a Christmas tree. But Charlie Brown seems to have a difficult time being in the Christmas spirit, and so his little buddy Linus says, Charlie Brown, you're the only person I know who can take a wonderful season like Christmas and turn it into a problem. Well, Charlie Brown says, you know, isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Linus says, I do. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. And interesting enough, he begins to recite from uh, Luke, the second chapter, uh, part of the Christmas story. And it's something like there is a, there are shepherds in the field keeping watch over their flock, uh, flock of sheep when all of a sudden an angel appears. And then the scripture says, the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Let's actually take it from Luke, the second chapter, verses 8 through 11, that he read. Now, Linus basically said that Christmas is all about joy. And if I remember correctly, the special when it was first shown, the executives at CBS uh, were a little concerned about the actual use of the Bible quote in the special. They figured it would turn off the viewers, but Peanuts creator Charles Schultz insisted that it be included. Thank God he insisted it. For remember this, the angel said to the shepherds, For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. That's what Christmas is all about. It is the light of love that is born not only in Jesus, but also in us. Now, this joy that I want to talk about here is something really special because there's a difference between joy and happiness. We cannot be happy without being joyful, but we can be joyful without being happy. So the word happiness actually comes from an old English word, hap, which literally means chance. It corresponds to the Latin fortuna, which means luck. If things happen, you know, the way we want them to, then we're happy. But if they don't, well, we're unhappy. Happiness is temporary. In fact, happiness is an external stimuli that, that we feel inside. Joy is internal, already there. Happiness depends on outward circumstances. Joy depends on inward character. Happiness depends upon what happens to us. Joy, however, depends upon what lives within us. So happiness is based on chance, joy, based on choice. What do I mean by choice? What I'm talking about choice is not an intellectual decision. It's decision, that's, a, that's to decide something. So this joy is something that we choose, we choose from the heart and is, is independent upon logic and reason and all of that. We are heartfelt, heart-centered, into it, in, intuiting what's already there. This joy is permanent. The other quality I want to add about joy is that it is spiritual. So, 
What's happening on the outside does not affect the joy that's on the inside. Now, that is part of this Charlie Brown's Christmas special that I first part that I want to take a look at. And then there's another bit of wisdom that comes from Peanuts Common Strip in which Lucy is coming to Charlie Brown saying, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown. Since it's this time of the season, I think we ought to bury past differences, you know what, and try to be kind to one another. Charlie Brown asks, why does it just have to be this time of the season? Why can't it be all year long? And Lucy looks at him and shouts at him, what are you, some kind of fanatic? Well, yes, I'm inviting us to be a fanatic. I want us to go beyond the Christmas day. In fact, beyond the Christmas season. And include um, Paul's words from the Philippians when he just says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. So Paul is televating, telling us to cultivate a sense of joy within us to really take a look at this presence that we carry with us all the time. If we have a sense of this God's love in our lives at all times, we'll be able to rejoice and have joys all the time. We can just choose to be in alignment with that. So now, we would just let and allow this joy that's already within us to fill us. We, we get into what I would call a seamless connection to the heart of the universe. One more little bit of wisdom from uh, Peanuts. Lucy, uh, gosh, she has the score to settle with Charlie Brown. So she's chasing and shouting at him. I'll get you, Charlie Brown. I'll get you. I'm going to knock your block off when I get you. And Charlie Brown is just running at full speed. And he's running and running. And then all of a sudden, he stops. He says, wait a minute. Hold everything. <laughs> we can't carry on like this, Lucy. We have no right to act this way. The world is filled with problems. People are hurting. People are hurting other people. People are not understanding one another. Now, if we as children can't solve what is already minor problems, how can we ever expect to? And then all of a sudden, Lucy's had enough and she pops Charlie Brown and knocks him down. And she stands over him and she said, I had to hit him quick. He was beginning to make too much sense. Well, Charlie Brown was really making a lot of sense. Oh, a lot of us, including myself, get angry. Sometimes we're caught up in the separation and division. And let's be honest, these are some challenging days. In fact, years that we have been exposed to. We have, I thought, and you probably thought too, that we had turned the corner on COVID. But no, <laughs> we got Omicron, and then we've got division with the vaccinated shouting at the unvaccinated, and the unvaccinated said, leave me alone, and both sides are tired and frustrated. We've got superpowers that are squabbling each other like jealous siblings. We've got politicians who are so devoted to partisan politics and committed to their individual principles, you know what? They can work together. They can collabor collaborate. We, they can't compromise. And just it just seems like coming together is just impossible. On another note, our prisons are full and our 401ks seem to be getting empty. So what's going on? And then on top of all of that, don't get me started about climate change. So in the midst of all of this external despair and 
animosity and confusion, we still can have internal joy. The Christ is born in us. This Christ is this spiritual I am presence that is ours. Now, do you know the story of um, Isaac Watts? Interesting. Isaac Watts was a sickly boy as an infant. He barely survived childhood. His health was so fragile that throughout his young formative years, you know what, he could barely stand. He became a pastor later on of a large church in London uh, when he was in his 20s. But with his delicate condition, he couldn't even get around to see the people in his congregation like he wanted to with, with the things that they really needed. So what he did, he wrote long, beautiful, hope-filled letters of encouragement to people. But then he didn't stop there. He started writing hymns and, and songs. In fact, he wrote over 750 hymns. And one of the most outstanding ones is Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. This is, some, this is one of the greatest hymns sung of all of the Christmas carols. Now, he did that while in pain, while suffering. And what with the beautiful thing of it, that joy that he had is so potent, so powerful, that it affected him, it affected his congregation. But since this joy rises up to a vibration that it can affect multitudes in the people, but also it can spread out through years. And there is a song that I like, uh, and, it, and it's, some of you may have heard it. I've got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. Well, let us remember this message that we can have this joy in our heart. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy. This is what I'm asking us to tap into because this is the good news that's there. We don't have to have a college education. We don't have to do all kinds of things to get it. It's already there. And it's there because, in truth, all the things that we have done wrong, you know what? That really doesn't matter. We have this heart of forgiveness. Forgiveness just wipes away. Things of our past are actually just, 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 I guess it has a stamp of approval that is no longer matter. When I'm talking about with this joy, it focuses in on a bright future and it wipes away the past because it fills it with love of forgiveness and unconditional acceptance. So this is the thing. Take a look at who you are, your joy. And if we were to take a fish and place this fish on the beach, you would just watch it just gasp for air, just trying to breathe. That fish really doesn't have any joy in it. And you say, okay, well, I'm going to try to get this fish some, some joy. So you cover it with a whole bunch of money, with some cash. That wouldn't really do it. And so while you're sitting on the beach and you're looking at the fish, you say, oh, I don't know what I'll make it happen you. And you get him some sunglasses, a beach chair, and get him a cold beer. Nah, that would not do it either. That wouldn't give that fish joy. For to give that fish joy, you would have to put him in the water. The fish can have joy in the water because that's what it is made for. It's made for the ocean. We cannot have joy on this earth swimming around in, in negativity. We are fish out of water. Our home 
is to swim in love. We were made for love and we were made in love and we were made to love. So when we give our life over to love, love gives us this everlasting joy in our life. My brothers and sisters, so let's be like Charlie Brown. Let's have some joy. And like you say, hey, can we have it beyond just the Christmas season? What I'm inviting us to do is to take a moment every day, especially what was going on, focus in and choose joy in the midst of whatever we're going through. And once we connect with the joy, joy will will always be there because it is already there. Joy is who we are. And our job is to stay in tune with it. God bless you. Thank you.